Hey friends, here with Adriana Patrich, and we're talking all about our new book, Choices to the Hills and Back Again, all about reclaiming your power, uh, the behind the scenes of filming the hills and what she's using on her skin to look so gorgeous. Anything else, Adriana? Um, I feel like we've talked about everything, everything from fame in the early 2000s to going out and just to toxic relationships and setting boundaries and um, you know, the choices we make in life and the consequences of those choices and where they lead us. And I just hope that the book inspires some people and they don't feel alone. They don't feel ashamed of what they've been through because they're not alone. So I was really vulnerable. I opened up and I really hope that people can connect with this book in one way or another. Love it. Great conversation, friends. Great book. Choices. Don't yes. forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote of the day, or rather our passage of the day, is from our guest and her new book. So stand by for this. I'm not ashamed of what I've been through. It has made me a stronger person in the end. It was the hardest fight of my life to get my power back. I've stopped giving in to the fears that I'm not good enough to be liked, valued, or heard. I've forgiven myself for staying in relationships that aren't working, for going along with what was easiest or what would make other people happy. It's my greatest hope that this book will enable one woman to learn from my mistakes or take comfort in knowing that she's not alone. Friends, this is from Audrina Patrich. Her new book is called Choices to the Hills and Back Again. Uh, very excited to have her on the show today. Heel Squad, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. Like I said, we're going to be chatting with Audrina about reclaiming your power, losing and refinding yourself in toxic situations and relationships and how she lived her hardest years, as she says, and learned her hardest lessons while being in the spotlight. You know, reality t- TV ain't easy, right, friends? No, thank you. Or right girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could not imagine. Excuse me, right queens. No way could I be on reality TV ever in my life. I couldn't imagine. So if they called you and said, we want you to be in a reality show, you would say no? It depends on what the show is, I guess. But I, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I feel like how they grew up in that era that they grew up in the hills, it was kind of nice because they didn't have social media now it would be a Mm -hmm. whole different story so i don't know i think back then i might be like yeah now i'd be like no i don't know but you know better so yeah so you can do better she didn't know any better right that's true that's true oh yeah it's a lot i I really couldn't imagine and she was 18 she was so young like i know it's a lot It's so hard to say no to the spotlight though, right? Because look at what comes with the spotlight. We see people live these incredible lives, but we don't know what goes on behind the scenes and the sacrifices that really go into it. And I know it's like, oh, cry me a river, but there are a lot of challenges that come with it. So I always say the grass isn't always greener Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you never really know if you could handle whatever it is that person is doing and how they're having to sacrifice behind the scenes. Well, and she talks about too briefly, like having to, she had this facade, this like gentle, kind, calm girl facade that she had to carry. And I feel like a lot of people do a lot of, you know, stars. It's like, you guys are always on. So that was interesting for me to read. I was like, oof, yeah, that would, that would be really hard. Here's, and we'll ask her, here's what I think she means. Cause she does have that gentle, calm Mm -hmm. kind of demeanor. I don't think that's a facade. I think the challenge is, when the other sides of you need to be shown in moments Mm -hmm. and you don't feel like you can be that person. Like everyone sees me and they see, you know, happy, bubbly, Gemini, fun, whatever. But I have my moments where I'm really angry and I have my moments when I'm really annoyed or really stressed or whatever it is. And it's hard because when people only know you as one thing, when you show the variety of sides of you, which is what we all are, we're all not, you know, we're multifaceted. And as Deepak Chopra said in our episode with him, it's, it's, you can be angry and happy. You can be generous and you can be cheap. You can be all this, all the things. That's what we are. Uh, It's just hard for people to accept that. And so you feel like you have to continue to be a certain role. Mm. So there, there are moments when Kevin, when I'll be like, 
so upset about something. And he's like, Maria, you're famous. Shush. And I go, but I'm a person. I am entitled to be upset right now. Oof, it's hard. Yeah. That sounds very hard. It's yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't know how, I, how I would be able to handle that. It's like, we already, we already feel judged being, <laughs> being the humans we are like, and that, that's a whole nother like added level to it. It's like, Oh my God, we already feel like we can't show emotions and boom, then there's that. Yeah. That's really hard. Mm -hmm. And that's why, it, you know, it does come with the territory, right? There's, there's those sacrifices where there are different levels of expectations and there's, um, it's just a different thing, but I'm, I'm curious. It's probably, I'll have you re say to her yeah. what you said to me, and then I'm going to see if, if maybe that's the case. So without further ado, um, let's take a quick break and we'll come back with Audrina. Congrats on the book, by the way. Thank you. How, I mean, we, let's get right into it. How scary was it to kind of, oh, and all the papers are falling out to, oh, to no. put all of this down on paper and, and kind of share your kind of inner truths? Um, to be honest, it was kind of hard. Um, but my ghostwriter that I had, Jen Schuster was amazing. And she was almost like a therapist in a way. It was very therapeutic. And, you know, we had a talk and I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to go all the way. Like I can't, cause certain things she would look up my name and be like, well, what, what can you, let's talk about this. Like, what's this about? And I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about that. <laughs> can we just leave that in the past? She's like, Audrina, if we're going to do this, like you have to go all the way. And I was like, okay, all right, let's do it. Or what was that moment? Was it Dancing with the Stars? Um, I think it was just about my divorce and mm. some stuff about the hills. Um, and then, yeah, just like being in the LA scene and fame and like who I would see out. Because I was like, I don't want to be that person that's like a tell-all. Like, I'm not going to give the scoop on people and their personal business, you know? That's yeah. not what the book's about. So I was very careful with everything. It's funny because I don't know why I'm getting the chills right now, but I'm getting the chills because as, uh, as I was going through it, I, even just hearing you talk about places like Hyde and who was out I'm like, we were all out at the same time in all of these yeah. places. And those were different times where, yeah, like it was the Lindsay Lohans, the Paris Hilton's, the Britney Spears's and all of that. And it's just so strange to capsule that time in history and to know we were part of it. Cause I look back at like all the things I was a part of and the events I was at and the, the times I would go out and it's, it's very strange. It is. And it's almost like we being in that era or like that time zone or time capsule, like that was the best time in Hollywood. I feel like it was so much fun. There was no Instagram or like cell phones or you're, you have to worry about people filming you or taking photos. And like, I don't know, it was just such a nostalgic, amazing time that now I look back and I was like, oh, I really took it for granted back then. Well, how could we not? We didn't know any better. I know you're right. right. <laughs> like the, like, I remember like the phone of choice was the sidekick. I had a Blackberry or you had a Motorola flip phone, flip phone. So yeah, there was no social media. Things were more Innocent and then also not because it didn't matter. No one was going to catch you really, unless a paparazzi photographer caught you coming out of somewhere stumbling. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it is, it is challenging to, to share things I'm sure without kind of feeling, um, like you're revealing too much about other people. Yeah. So there's a fine line of that because I didn't want to cross that, um, but I think I did a pretty good job in giving enough information without giving too much <laughs> of that, yeah. like of other people's business or it's not my place to say really. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's crazy because, you know, as I'm looking through it and I'm remembering times like you, you know, when you were on dancing with the stars, having to cover for Corey, during that time and tell people like, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then now you can finally say what you were going through must be cathartic because it affected your performance for you. I'm sure. How could you, yeah. how could it not? 
It really did. Tony would get pretty upset about it. And I think I actually filmed, there was a clip as we were dancing and I, I broke down. I think did, you did Dancing with the Stars, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. So you know how it is like dancing eight hours a day, so it's five to six days a week sometimes, like it's emotionally like wearing on you. So I think I had a point where I just had enough and I just broke down crying and they captured it on camera. And so when they showed that before I danced, I was like, oh my gosh, no, <laughs> they just showed that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because it gave like that inside that I didn't really want anyone to know, but that's what was going on. I know. And then you can't even say it. Like you said in the book, I didn't want them to think certain things of me or him. So you have to bottle everything up which yeah. I think as women, we're really good at, we bottle everything up and we've got the, it'll all, you know, it's all, all is good. Like no, no problem. But, um, do you think if you didn't have to deal with that, that maybe you would have gone further? Mm, On Dancing with the Stars? Yes, I do. Because I would have been more focused. I would have been more just all about it and not having any of these second thoughts or like, am I doing, am I doing too much? Is this too touchy? Like I'm going to, we're going to get in a fight about this later. Um, So yeah, I think if I was single and like, or not dealing with that kind of relationship and there's more trust, I would have went farther. Although we did get booted with nines. So I don't know. <laughs> I know that's right. It's, it's, yeah. it's an interesting system, but, um, but I always wish like there was a, a part two where we could have our revenge. <laughs> Yes, let's do it. We'll go on the same season. <laughs> right? Like, like, let's get revenge on our old selves who didn't quite figure it out that time or had too many injuries or whatever it is. Because it, to me, it was the most magical thing I've ever gotten to do. It really was. And I was in the best shape of my life. I did lose some weight, but like I, my legs, like I was so healthy and so fit. It was amazing. So, so cool. Um, Kelsey, when we started the show, um, said something, I'm going to have her jump in and say it again, because I, I think I have a take on this and I'm curious to see if it's, if it's on, on point. Audrina, I I think, oh, go ahead. Go uh ahead. I think I know what it might be. Oh, I just really liked, honestly, it was like page two. You talk about how you, let's see, bah, bah, bah. I hit the I challenges I've faced and now the carefully crafted facade is beginning to crack. And mm-hmm. I'm curious about that carefully crafted facade. Was it like, you know, you had to put on this front, like you were this, you know, cool, calm, collected person, but that's like what Marie and I were saying is like, that's who you are though. Or was it like, you felt like you couldn't show different sides of you? I'm curious about that. Um, so with that, like I am very cool, calm, collected, but I felt like with what I was going through, it's like, I was, you know, even on the show, like I was having a relationship outside of the show. And then on the show, I was having like different dating, different people or doing different storylines. So for me, I had this created facade, especially on the show. Um, But then in my real life, there were certain things going on that were so emotional and so hard that I couldn't really talk about because it wouldn't make sense. Um, And then especially, you know, doing red carpets, like you don't want to talk about heavy things. You just want to keep it light and happy and like, just keep it surface level. So it was kind of like constantly like, especially if me and my ex got in this huge fight and he didn't want me to go somewhere, but it was my job and I had to, and I was crying and I was like, okay, pull it together. Like put a smile on your face, just get out there and do this interview and just get it over with. So that's kind of what I was going through. I think that's what I meant by that. Just kind of, you know, like, and my way of dealing with things, I would get emotional. So like, I would just cry by myself and get it out, get better and then just go on and like bury it down inside. Got it. So it's a little yeah. different than what we were thinking and what we were talking about. Cause I said, if you felt like you always had to be that calm kind of demeanor, I'm like, that's definitely who she is, who I've seen you to be. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people don't give us the latitude when they know us for one thing to be the other things. Mm-hmm. And yes, the added pressure is, well, it's a red carpet or it's an interview. Yeah. People don't want to see the heavy stuff. 
Um, so yeah, when people ask you, how are you? You're like, great. And then you oh, really great. everything's inside. fine. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and, and even sometimes with my friends or like certain close people, if they're like, no, Adrena, how are you really? And they're staring into my eyes and I would start cheering up. I'm like, I'm great. They're like, no, you're not. I'm like, don't ask me, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, I always kind of had to be cool, calm and collected. I didn't really have a choice. And so there were moments where the paparazzi would catch me crying on the street or like breaking down because as you said, like you pent all that up and then it just comes out. And, you know, for some people it comes out all in different ways. So this was a half a lifetime ago for you. You're 36 now. That was 18. Where, like, when you look back, how different do you think you are now? Oh my gosh, Maria. So I will, for the Hills <laughs> podcast rewatch, we have been rewatching all of season one of the Hills. <laughs> and it is so cringy. It is so hard to watch because <laughs> my voice, I feel, sounds like a baby. We all like have our baby fat still. And the things we were going through on TV, like I was very different then. Like I've learned so much and I went through a lot of it on TV and with this family of producers. So, you know, and, and also reading comments and stuff on Perez Hilton or all the blogs and the, the Us Weeklies and all that of what people were saying or sources were saying about us. So um, that was all really hard, but it, I definitely feel like it helped thicken my skin and kind of teach me how to brush it off and be okay and just ignore it. Um, but I definitely have grown a lot since I was 18 in so many ways. In what ways do you think like are the most powerful and how did you, how do you think you got there? Obviously the pain will push you to some kind of growth, but were there, you know, therapists, or modalities that you used? Tell me kind of a little bit about that. Um, there's definitely therapists. Um, I think when I was younger, though, I didn't have the therapists. I had my friends were kind of my therapists, which didn't always give the best advice. <laughs> and then you're just young and just carefree, no responsibilities and just whatever. Let's just go drink, you know? And then as I got older, I started realizing like, okay, how I'm feeling right now, like going through these toxic relationships, it's from one guy to the next. Like I need, I need to stop relearning this lesson. So what do I need to do? So that's whenever the therapy started coming in and where I wasn't confiding as much in my friends for advice because they were going through stuff too. Um, I needed an advocate to help me through it and guide me and kind of put things in perspective. So I did start going to therapy in my like mid twenties. And so you notice the same cycle. We talk about it here all the time is like, whatever keeps repeating and is a pattern is the thing that you need to address. So at what point did you realize, Oh, I have a pattern here. Um, definitely with Justin, <laughs> that was such a young you know, relationship. But after him, um, I think with Ryan, I loved Ryan, but it's just like, I wasn't saying what I wanted. And I was just kind of letting whoever kind of guide the relationship and going with the flow. And that's where, and then when I got with Corey, he was so, so more masculine and like, very respected in his field of work. And like, I like that, that he was more like bold and powerful in that way. And I think that's why I gravitated toward him, but then it all started happening again. And I started losing myself in these relationships where, you know, you just get in this vicious cycle where everything's okay. They can cheat on you. They could treat you this way. They could disappear. And like, you, I have to be okay with it. I have to accept it or they're going to be mad or like, I don't want to co have confrontation. So I got stuck in that. So I had to learn how to set boundaries, how to say no, how to stick to my guns. And it was really hard. It takes a lot of practice and just developing those habits. So how long did it take and how, and tell us what you've learned about setting boundaries. It's another topic we're obsessed <laughs> with here. I mean, I'm still learning. I'm just learning boundaries. <laughs> Adrena, I just started doing that with my therapist in, in the recent, let's say a few months. 
and it's changing my life. But it took me till 44 or 43 technically to do it. I mean, I'm still learning. It's, it's really hard because you catch yourself going back to your old ways. It's almost like instilled in you and you don't even realize you're doing it, but you catch yourself and you're like, okay, let me just process this and like deal with this differently. Um, but boundaries, it's just, even with filming sometimes it's, you know, on the most recent Hills, I was pressured to do a lot of things that I didn't want to do. That wasn't me. And then I had to learn towards the end to say no and no is no. And if they kept asking and asking and asking, blowing my phone up all day, eventually I would just shut my phone off. And I said, I told you my answer was no. I said, no, so stop. So that was really hard for me because I, with peer pressure and wanting to do my best and give my all. And if sometimes you're guilted or like you feel like someone's making you feel bad or manipulating something, you have to realize what manipulation is and put your foot down and set that boundary, not feel bad or let it get to you, which is hard sometimes. I feel like a people pleaser or I am, but, and I'm still learning with that too. Yeah. Do you think becoming a mom helped you with some of this stuff too? Absolutely. With Kira, she is my priority. And now it's like, I want her to look at me and learn how to get inspired and to know that like she wants to be like me and she can be strong. And so I don't want her to see how I was. Well, she will eventually, she's going to watch the show back then, but I could use that as like a teaching method, you know, like this is what I did and the choices I made turned into these consequences. Some were good, some were bad, but like you can learn from other people or you could learn the hard way. Like I used to and rebel. Um, But yeah, she just, you know, and, and even filming, like coming back home to her or, you know, always checking in with her, like she's my everything. And I feel like with her, it's really changed my life in so many ways. Yeah. It's like a good North star to keep you on track. Yeah. I love uh, the name choices. We end the show with be nice people, make good choices (laughs) and be present. So I really love that. Um, Thank Do you, you feel like you look back? Um, I know that there was a photo shoot, I think like a topless photo shoot. You mentioned that you were not happy that you did. What did they want you to do that you had to like say no to again? That that was how could you know it be more than that, let's say? Um, gosh, well, even on the show, to make it extra spicy, I remember Adam asked me to take my top off in the scene with Justin, and I was like no, there's like tons of people standing around. Why am I going to take my top off in front of all of you guys? <laughs> like that's something I, you know. And then he's like, we'll all go inside. We won't show anything, just get in the pool. And I did it, but that was another lesson. It's like, here I go again, trying to please everyone. Um, but another thing, I'm trying to think like what was worse than that, that I, wait, what was the question that I should have said no to or I, or I learned from? Or- or just something that you had to keep sticking to your guns that they were like, oh. you know, we want you to do. Yeah. Um, gosh. I feel like there's been a lot of those moments. Oh, um, Playboy. I remember my old agent and manager and everyone, this is like forever ago. They were really pushing me to do Playboy. And even though I kept saying no, it's like, the money was so good and this photographer is amazing and it will be so good for you. And this is the direction we want to go. You'll be like the next Carmen Electra. And I was like, that's not really that I love Carmen Electra, but that's not really the direction I want to go. And I'm at a point now where I want to be respected. I don't want to like, not that anyone that takes their clothes off for Playboy is not, it's just, that's not where I was in my life at that point. So Mm -hmm. I kept saying no and no, no, no. And they finally listened to me. And then another time there was this movie, um, it was an indie film and they wanted me to play this drug addict stripper. And I read the script and I was like, Whoa, <laughs> like, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> like, there's no way I can do this. Like, that's crazy. 
Um, but they're like, you have to do this. It's a different side of you. It'll step you up in the, in the TV, like movie world. It'll get you other roles. I'm like, but you guys are pushing me in this direction. That's so sexual and provocative. Like that's not where I want to go. And so I said, no again. And I had to keep saying no. And they finally listened. So I just, again, like they don't always listen. And so at that point, I just have to shut out and shut my phone off and just be like, I said, no, and that's my answer. Like, stop asking me. Yeah. I, I love that because, you know, what I was saying earlier on the show is people don't ever get to see kind of the behind the scenes of what all of this entails. And it is easier to give in sometimes because a, we don't know any better. Technically they're the experts. And yeah. then also when they're pushing and pushing, it's no different than peer pressure with like drugs. No wonder people say yes. Yeah. To drugs. They're like, okay, fine. You know, mm-hmm. whatever. But, um, it is hard to kind of stick to your guns. I remember getting offered playboy too. Um, <laughs> but I think mine was, was probably later. You probably got like the million dollar offer. I don't remember. Actually, I should look up in my emails because oh yeah. I feel like actually it was close to that now that I think about it, but it wasn't that. Cause I remember a million, but it was probably like 650,000 or something stupid. I have to look it yeah, up. Yeah. Did they offer crazy. you a million? It was close to a million. Yeah. But I yeah. was like, hey, that's really good money. But like, <laughs> Do I want to go that route? And then I start thinking about all my cousins that Google me all the time. And, you know, my family is my, they're all my biggest supporters. And they're always like, have my name on Google, whatever, like where they get notifications. And I was like, is that what I want my grandpa and grandma, like all my little cousins, teenage cousins to be showing their friends at school or like, I don't know, like that stuff. When I got to a certain age, all of that stuff started flooding in. And I actually started caring a little bit more about my image and what I wanted and the direction I wanted to go instead of just doing whatever anyone told me because they knew better than I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I understand that it's, (laughs) it's really, really hard. I mean, I can't even get naked in the doctor's office. So forget like being on the cover of a magazine, make it like a whole layout. It's just not going to happen. Well, nowadays it's like back then our bodies were our real bodies. And nowadays I feel like everyone's getting their butts injected. Like it's like, it's like, their body, but not their body. So I feel like a lot more girls feel more um, secure with doing that because it's like perfected, like molded, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Well, And if you've had someone do all that work to it, you want to show it off. Yeah. Cause then you're like, wow, I look so hot. I have hips now. I have a butt Yeah, (laughs) or whatever. That's so funny. Um, You know, you talk a lot about taking your power back and dealing with uh, um, toxic relationships. So a lot of the toxic relationships were on camera. What, what is that like to have to kind of go through that on camera? Cause not many people would know. Yeah. It's really hard because when you, you're already living it once and then you have to relive it again, watching it. So I know for me, it was kind of shameful in a way and humiliating and you just feel so stupid, like, oh my gosh, everyone's going to hate me or like, how could I do that? So yeah, I think living it out on camera and then, I mean, I would be going to the grocery store, to the mall and I'd have, you know, like older mothers or grandmas come up to me and be like, why are you with Justin Bobby? And you let him treat you like this and better. And I was like, hi, like, who are you? (laughs) You know, I was being lectured. And so it's okay. Um, That was kind of, I don't know. It was kind of weird. It was hard to go through because even now watching it on our Hills podcast, looking back and rewatching it again, I haven't watched that in so long. I just, I'm like, gosh, what was I thinking? I was like in a totally different place back then, even like even seven years ago, I was in a different place eight years ago. So it's, it's hard. And then, you know, but once that aired, I did started, I started to get a lot of DMs from girls that were going through the same exact thing 
So it didn't make me feel as ashamed um, because it, people didn't feel alone. They were going through the same thing I was. Yeah. What about, I mean, the side that we don't get to hear very much about, I guess, or maybe people do, but I don't think I have enough background. It, it, like you said, when you had to spice things up and and kind of fake things for camera, like create scenes and create moments. Tell me like the yeah. hardest ones you had to do that, again, maybe you're getting comments on the street about, you're like, if you only knew it was fake, know, that was all made up. That was just for a scene. This is not, this is like a soap opera, but I know. <laughs> but I real. know. Yeah. Um, there is a few, I mean, there was one, I think I've talked about this a few times, but Kristen and I had to get in a fight over Justin. And even though I had a boyfriend else that wasn't on the show, on the, on the Hills, I had to keep like, talking about Justin all the time and fighting over him. And then, you know, I'm being called this fifth clinger, whatever that term is. I don't need fifth wheel. I don't know. Whatever that is. Stacey, yeah, the bartender wheel. called fifth wheel. Or, yeah. Um, and so eventually I hit a point, a breaking point where the producers, I was like, listen, I don't want to keep fighting over Justin. We're over. I'm with someone new. This is not good for my new relationship. And on the show, it's making me look stupid. Like, I don't want to keep doing this. Um, but, the, you know, it. they needed it for, um, for ratings. It was really good for the show. So Kristen and I, I refused. And I was like, no, get me out of here. I don't want to do this. She's like, Adriana, let's just do it. I don't want to be here either. And I was like, but you're not looking stupid. I am like, have Justin go be with him. She's like, I don't want it. But I was like, like, I don't want him. Like, what are we doing? So <laughs> both of you are fighting over somebody that's not wanted technically right now. <laughs> I mean, so then we're like, okay, fine, we'll just do it. So we did it and then they let us leave. So that was one incident. Another one was, and Sean Stewart was, he's such a nice guy, but I just didn't romantically feel anything for him in that way. So I was constantly being pressured to be with him and then to kiss him for the whole cast in order to get a third season, like the pressure of doing that nonstop. And then we're like drinking. So on top of that, when you're drinking, it's easier to influence someone and pressure them. So in that scene, you could tell I was super annoyed. I wasn't very nice. He, I was like, okay, fine. Just, Okay. So I kissed him and then he tried to tongue and I was like, uh, uh, no tongue, not happening, Sean, this is not happening. Don't even try it. Like, no, <laughs> like, so that was really hard. And then they wanted me to keep going and going and going. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. I don't care. Like, I just, my heart's not in it. It's not fair to him. I don't want him to start liking me. I just, I can't do this. So I guess I screwed up that storyline of where it could have been. That's and then, a lot of pressure, actually. Yeah. And then another one was Heidi and I, our friendship. You know, like, we became really close on the new hills. And with her and Ashley and that drama that was going on, a lot of it, the producers would tell me one thing. She would tell me another. I didn't know who to believe. They would tell me she was saying all this bad stuff about me. So why am I being nice about her? That So they would you know, I would get fed lines of what to say in the interviews and kind of, and then in that point, I was like, okay, I'm separating my heart from this show. This is my work. Like I'll show up, I'll do what I need to do. And I'm leaving. Like I'm not getting involved or caring anymore. Like this isn't basically an improv acting show to me. Like that's that. So I showed up and did what I had to do. And then I left. So whenever all that aired, you know, I feel like we both were kind of like, what? Like you said this about me or what's real and what's fake? Like, what did you really mean? What didn't you mean? So that's kind of like a weird thing that we all went through as well on the show. I never thought of that. You're right. Because even, you know, <laughs> any of the reality shows I watch, like a 90 day fiance, you wonder what the other person's going to think once they see the interview and the interview, what people don't realize is you are being fed a lot of lines. Yeah. Yeah. Because it all lot. has to match up. So some of it isn't even in your own words, but now you're no. going to say, say it wasn't and people have to believe you. So how did that affect your friendships? Was there any, like a big one that just, blew yes. up? 
Yeah, I feel like it really affected Heidi and I. Um, and it really affected all of us. And I think, you know, because we were all in this together, but at the same time, it's like, you guys, we have to make a show. Like, let's just think of this as a show. We show up, let's all be on the same page. You know, if I'm saying this about you, you're saying this about me, but let's just do it together. But all of us couldn't really do it together because there was always feelings being hurt or this mm. or that. So it created a lot of grudges and resentments and people not wanting to film with each other. And yeah, there was a lot of lines that were crossed because if we all would have sat down at the very beginning with the producers and been like, okay, this is what we're thinking. And we just let each other know, give each other a heads up. Like, I think that would have helped a little bit more instead of just watching it and being like, what, you said that about me? Like, yeah, you know, it was hard. Was this, is I think back, like were shows like this, the Hills kind of the precursor to like housewives and all of that, because these were the first shows where it was reality, but then it blended into a little scripted, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how the housewives are, but yeah, it was very, you know, they scrub stuff. Oh, there's God. I mean, people's lives are not that exciting and dramatic, (laughs) especially (laughs) like, and even you don't hang out with those people all the time. It's like, that's your TV friends or your TV family. And when you're together, you've known each other for so long. So you do start to bicker and you do have to like, build into these storylines to make it more exciting because otherwise if we're all sitting there and we're all getting along and being nice that's boring yeah so would you and have you been approached to ever do the housewives um I have been approached before and I would not do it just because I feel like I've been through enough drama and for once in my life I have peace and I want to keep it that way (laughs) Um, and I feel like on the housewives, they're extra dramatic. Like they are, they are like times 20 over the hills. So I don't know if physically, mentally, and emotionally, I could do that at this point. I, I get it. Every time I've interviewed on my serious XM show, I used to interview them all the time. And my favorite question at the end would be, okay, how would I do? And they're like, horror. Well, don't do it. And I go, yeah, I know. I know I would suck at this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they go for the throat. There's yeah. no holding back. And yeah. And that's something I was like, yeah, but I'm not a housewife. I don't have this giant house and a private jet. And like, no, I would not fit in at all. I'm not a very dramatic confrontational person to begin with. Mm-hmm. And I don't know any of them really. Yeah, so. it's it's definitely jumping back into the fire. So MTV uh, brought it back at some point and then they recast you guys. And then I don't think it worked, right? No. Have no, they talked so, about doing it again, but with you guys? No. So basically they recasted, which, well, we got on the last one, Brandon came on. We had Misha, then we had Caroline. Um, but I just feel like with 14 people, it was too much. And instead of being 30 minute episodes, it was an hour long, but that still wasn't enough because there was so much going on. So after the Hills New Beginnings ended, there we had like a six month waiting period where we couldn't really do anything else. We just kind of had to wait and see if we're getting a third. And I was like, well, I did that kiss for Sean. So I think we're getting a third, (laughs) but we didn't. That didn't even matter. And then we find out online that they've recasted the whole Hills, a cast of 20. And it's like out with the old and with the new. And we had no idea. We found out when everyone else did. So it was kind of like a slap in the face. Wow. So now you guys are doing a podcast. And it's funny because I was just on the One Tree Hill podcast where they would watch episodes because I did a season of that. And it was so much fun going back and seeing, I hadn't seen these episodes that I did a whole season in since it was, it it aired. So for you guys, and I know you briefly touched on this earlier for you guys, are you watching them independently or are you watching them together? Cause it's you and it's Brody and Frankie, right? Yes. 
So basically, we watched the first one all together. But with all of us there together, I feel like it took a little bit more time because we're sitting there talking over while we're watching it, not really paying attention. Mm -hmm. Um, So now we watch it all separately. So last night, my friend Brianna came over and we watched episodes four, five, and six of season one because we're going to be filming about that on Thursday. So um, it's really fun. So I love watching it with my girlfriends because we can laugh and like have a glass of wine and reminisce and like the one we watched I went on like two terrible dates and it was just really funny to relive and I was like gosh I wonder what that guy's doing now um and gotta look see- him up but for the podcast that's that should be part of it is going back and finding these people and I don't know Facebook creeping on them and seeing their new lives and <laughs> what I yours know. could have been with it that's a good idea I don't even remember his last name though his name was Danny he was a model and that's all, I don't know. It was so, but we are having Brian on. So we're having a lot of people come on that were producers of the Hills that were on the Hills and involved and celebrity fans of the Hills. And we have fans call in to ask questions and who won't yeah. be on the podcast. I don't think who's, Heidi like, and who's Spencer not invited? Come on. Well, we we invited? Really, yeah, we invited them. I don't think they want to come on. Did they say no? Well, I think they want to be paid. So I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. I don't think a start a GoFundMe. <laughs> so Let's start a GoFundMe. A GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone else, Jason's coming on. Um, yeah, everybody's pretty open to coming on. Got it. But maybe Heidi will. I don't know. I don't think Spencer will, but we'll see. And what else are you up to work-wise? Last time I saw you, you had your swimsuit line, which I, I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, you obviously you. have the book. What else is going on? Um, the book and the podcast right now. And then as far as my swimwear line, I have not given that up yet. Well, I'm not going to, not yet. But I'm just, after going through the divorce and everything, it really took everything I had. So it's like starting over and saving again, because I was financing it all on my own. So unless I find an investor, I've just been saving and saving to try to do the swim line or keep it going and do more beach accessories and stuff like that. And I want to do kids stuff too with Kira, but you know, I'll get there. It's just, you should, that was a really great line. Thank you. You're welcome. And before I let you go, I know we have to get some beauty secrets from you. Anything that we need to know that's on your radar that you're loving? Um, right now, I feel like I stick to the same stuff. Um, let me think beauty stuff. What did I just use? I mean, I always love the Chanel bronzer and the little thing like in the summer, especially you don't need makeup. I just put the bronzer stuff on and go out with that it's like a liquid or like a um yeah it looks like a mousse or a bomb it's like that but you just it's so nice and it just gives you a nice little touch I wanted to try that actually that's so funny you mentioned oh you have to get it it's the best like I can't live without it that's like my go-to okay Audrina how do you look like 28 that's what we need to know I mean both you and there you go this is true this is true though that we need those secrets um, I don't know. I think a lot of it comes down to genetics too. Um, and just, I've always been really good at taking care of my skin and I wash my face no matter what time of the night I go to bed, like no matter what I'm washing my face, <laughs> no matter where I am. Um, and then just good products. I use a good, um, hyaluronic acid. I've been using, it's, like a mushroom hyaluronic acid. I think it's from Coke. Is it Coco kind or yeah, I've kind of been transitioning into more clean, um, clean products, which I've noticed a difference with my skin. And then using a vitamin C serum. Thank you so much for being on the show, Audrina. All right. Well, that was fun. So fun. She's just such a light. She's so nice. Like so She's a nice, really cool girl. I'm just like, wow, you are such a cool person. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. I think, I mean, 
she gave us a lot too. It was like, it was fun because we got kind of like behind the scenes stuff, but then we also got a lot of great, you know, like life tips. So I loved that. And also I will, if I, I literally see Spencer and Heidi every Sunday when I go to brunch. So I'm going to be Stop. like, list I, every Sunday. They're there every Sunday and I'm there every Sunday. So I'm be like, oh, you guys should really do the pod. <laughs> They're so funny. That is the truth though. They won't do anything unless they get paid. That's, I've also heard that. Mm. That's, That's interesting. the MO. So anyhow, <laughs> uh, friends, if you haven't checked out Macy's.com backslash better together, I have all my favorite picks from Macy's there for you. Amazing stuff that uh, basically is my storage bin for all the things I would like to purchase. And so every day I peruse it and I grab something, not every day, but I, every day I'm perusing for you, but I'm also storing some items for myself. So, uh, take a peek and, um, you know, they have everything that you need there across the board and, uh, great value, great, great clothes, great everything. So take a peek at that, uh, really supports our show when you make purchases through that link, even if it's macy's.com backslash better together in the meantime be nice people make good choices and be present